Hi guys, welcome to this revision summary video for everything that you need to know for the alkali metals and the noble gases. Okay, let's start off with the alkali metals then. Now hopefully you'll remember from the key concepts area that everything in group 1 has one electron in the outer shell. That means they have the same chemical properties, they react the same way. The physical properties are that they are soft and they have low melting points. Now what you need to be able to do is tell me what happens when you take the alkali metals and you put them into water. The three that you need to remember are lithium, sodium and potassium. And if you pour all three into water, they float on water, they move about on water and they fizz, proving you have a gas present. All three do that. The difference between lithium and sodium, however, is sodium moves slightly faster. It melts, so it turns into a molten ball. That proves that it's got a low melting point and it gives off more gas, so you see more fizzing. When we move down to potassium, which is the next one down in the group, it moves even faster than sodium. It sets on fire with a lilac flame, and it gives off more gas, so you see more fizzing. Now, from that, you can work out the order of reactivity. So lithium is the least reactive, because it only floated, moved and fizzed. Sodium is the second most reactive, because it moved faster, gave off more gas, and formed a molten ball. And potassium is the most reactive because it's set on fire. So there are two ways they'll be asking you to describe these reactions. Number one, what happens when you put them into water? That's what we've just covered. And number two, word equations. So if we take lithium, for example, if you put lithium into water, which has got the symbol Li and H2O, you get a hydroxide. So because the metal was lithium, we have lithium hydroxide, which has the formula LiOH. And I always get hydrogen gas when I put a metal into water, which is H2, remember it's diatomic. Now that word and symbol equation is exactly the same regardless of the metal from group one. So if I had sodium instead of lithium, it would be sodium Na plus water H2O goes to sodium hydroxide NaOH plus hydrogen and it's the same for potassium and everything else in group one. And some of you will have pointed out this is not balanced, so what you have to do is look at the number of letters, the number of symbols on either side, and make sure it's even, which would end up with two in front of your NaOH, two in front of your Na, and two in front of your H2O. The next part of this video is gonna have a look at why reactivity increases as you go down group one. Now because they're similar, I'm gonna put group seven in here, so you can see why reactivity decreases as you go down group seven. And we're gonna start off looking at the outer shells. If you remember, group one has one electron in the outer shell and group seven has seven electrons in the outer shell, which means that group one metals want to lose electrons and group seven want to gain them. That's massively important. Now, as we go down the groups, the atomic radius increases, so the size of the atom. That means there are more shells with more electrons. So you get something called electron shielding. So as you go down the group, there is more electron shielding. Now you should remember the nucleus is positive and there's a force of attraction between our positive nucleus and our negative electron. But as the outer electron gets further away, that force of attraction becomes weaker. So that explanation is exactly the same for group one and group seven. The difference is group one wants to lose one and group seven wants to gain one. So for group one, it's easier to lose that electron because the force of attraction is weaker. Therefore, it's more reactive as you go down the group. But with group seven, it's harder to gain that electron because the force of attraction is weaker. So the explanation is the same, except for this one wants to gain it, which means it's less reactive. The final section of this video, the noble gases. Why are they unreactive? Let's find out. Now, the key thing about the noble gases is they have full outer shells. If they have full outer shells, it means they don't need to gain or lose electrons, which makes them inert or unreactive. So again, they have the same chemical properties. And they have very similar physical properties in that they're all colourless gases. But one thing it's really important to notice is that the density increases as you go down the group. These properties make them useful for three things. Balloons, welding, and filament bulbs. So what you're expected to know is the names of the noble gases that are used for each of those different uses and an explanation as to why. And that's all to do with not needing to gain or lose any electrons. 
So if we have a look at party balloons or hot air balloons, they use helium. The reason for that is they are less dense than air. The other thing is they are unreactive and also that makes them non-flammable. Hydrogen used to be used, hydrogen is highly flammable, so we don't use that. Why are they unreactive? They have a full outer shell, they don't want to gain or lose any electrons. If we have a look at welding, that's argon. The reason argon is used in welding is because it's inert, it provides an inert atmosphere. It means the oxygen doesn't react with the actual metal, causing impurities. And again, why? Because it's got a full outer shell, doesn't need to gain or lose any electrons. And then finally, filament light bulbs. You could use argon or krypton. Again, the reason, it's an inert atmosphere. The actual noble gases won't react with the hot filament. They won't corrode it, they won't break it. And krypton is used in bright lights as well, like flash photography, for exactly the same reason. And that brings this revision summary video to an end. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to my channel, you can check out the latest video, and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.